and we should be looking to create some great super state. But I do think that being a member of the European Union is fundamentally important, fundamentally important to Britain, and therefore we should seek to stay within it. Now, let me just ask uh, to structure what I want to say uh, two or three questions. That old variation of the Monty Python question, what has Europe ever done for us? I think that this is one of the more fundamental things, that, and sometimes we forget some of the things that it did for us in the past and still does for us today. Bear in mind post-war Europe, just after the Second World War, where countries which had spent the previous 150 years, and indeed one could argue a thousand years, battling each other at regular intervals, had basically worn themselves out, <coughs> but had seen for themselves three times in continental Europe within a hundred years the risks of Franco-German competition and the dangers of different countries in Europe falling apart. So the first thing, and the often thing we forget most, is that the European Union has actually helped to underpin our security. It's actually got rid of all those old tendencies towards war. Of course, we're still competitors, of course we still battle it out, but the battles are in the meeting rooms and in the negotiations, not on the battlefield. And if we doubt that that still has a relevance to us, look at the Balkans, look at the bloody history of the 1990s. Violence and war are not things that now happen just in other parts of the world. They still happen here in Europe. And I believe that it's the prospect of membership of the European Union that holds out the best hope of the remaining parts of the Balkans finding peace and actually coming together with the rest of us. Besides security, let's not forget democracy. You think of the 27 members of the European Union today, how many of them were, until very recently, either fascist states or communist states? States. 20 years ago, when I graduated from this august institution, the Berlin Wall was still intact. The countries of Eastern Europe, like what was then Czechoslovakia, now Czechs and Slovaks, Poland, Hungary, these countries were still behind the Iron Curtain. And I didn't actually believe, I don't know if David did or anybody else who's slightly older in the room this evening that in my lifetime I would necessarily see that Berlin Wall come down. But the fact is that when it came down, the prospect of being part of Europe and having the opportunity to embed and then reinforce democracy was absolutely crucial. And the requirements to join this democratic club have forced reform and development in those countries' institutions on a pace and in a way that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Equally, we have the, we can see the impact that it is having on prospective members to this day. Turkey has a long way to go before it can be a member of the European Union. The most optimistic expectation is it will take 10 years before it can become a member. And yet, we are slowly seeing reforms taking place within that country as it seeks to democratise itself, to get rid of some of the most offensive parts of its constitution from our uh, democratic perspective and prepare itself to live by the human rights and other norms that we happily take for granted. Now the pillar of, this, of, the, of the, 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 the basic reason for supporting Europe that we mustn't forget is prosperity. We're now part of a Europe of 500 million people. It's a lot of people. It's the largest economic trading bloc in the world and it has transformed the economies of 